Good morning. Today I am with Wilbur Hackett from the University of Kentucky, uh, one of the trailblazers in the entire landscape of college football. Thank you for being with us today, Wilbur. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. So I really just want to get started. I want to hear a little bit more about, about your story. So where do I start? Let's start, let's start with uh, growing up. Where, where, where are you originally from? Okay, uh, I was born in, a, born in a little small country town, 12 miles east of Lexington, called Winchester, Kentucky. Uh, Winchester uh, is on the foothills of Eastern Kentucky. Uh, I, I uh, went from the, uh, well, I did, I attended kindergarten and first grade in Winchester and then uh, my dad uh, got a job in Louisville. So we moved in, uh, in 1955, we moved from Winchester to Louisville. But, uh, and, and, and that's significant because uh, it, uh, I didn't know, but back then, of course, uh, UK was 12 miles from Lex, uh, 12 miles from Winchester. And my parents were actually, uh, UK fans back when it wasn't popular, when when blacks couldn't even attend games. I mean, when African Americans uh, uh, didn't, there, there were no African Americans in the SEC, and African Americans couldn't even attend the games, but they were still UK fans. So that's significance there. So then I moved to Louisville, and I grew up uh, a University of Louisville fan, and uh, I also grew up uh, in, in Louisville when you know uh, from the elementary school, junior high school, to high school. Uh, DuPont Manual High School, George Bass Scholar, Duval uh, uh, Elementary and Junior High. Then I went to DuPont Manual High School, and, uh, and 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 then well, I played sports, three sports, and became uh, had an opportunity to go to UK on a football scholarship. Uh, so that's kind of how it all started. I started playing, uh, uh, I guess, organized football at the age of eight. I've always been uh, an, an athlete all my life, and, and growing up in the projects of Carter Homes in Louisville, you had to, you had to play sports, or, and you had to be tough. So, uh, so I, I, all this led up to me, you know, again playing football and and what well, three sports in high school, Dupont Main, and then you get an opportunity to go to University of Kentucky on a football scholarship. I had other opportunities to go to other schools. Michigan State was my number one choice. Uh, Indiana was a uh, high on the list. I visited Notre Dame, but in the end, it, 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 what it boiled down to was uh, my parents being that uh, being a strong UK fans, and 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 in the in the end, that's uh, uh, that's how I ended up in UK. And there's a story to that. So so let me let me tell you this part. And you Absolutely, can... I would I would love to hear all of it. Okay, okay. So uh, when, when I live in Winchester, and, and keep in mind. In Winchester, I was uh, uh, at the age of, uh, I left there at the age of six. And so uh, my dad worked for this company called uh, Pound Tire Company uh, in Winchester. And the, of course, back then in, the, in 1950, of course, Bear Bryant was the head football coach at UK. And, and they actually, um, they tied, uh, I think in the Orange Bowl or someone, uh, uh, in the Orange Bowl, anyway, in 1950, UK shared, so they say, the national title. So, and, and, and Barry Brown was, was the coach there for five years. So, in 1950, they had a really good team. So, uh, so UK football was big back then. And Barry Brown was the coach, keep in mind. So, so yes, I mean, and people around Winchester uh, were, 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 of course, you know, big, big UK fans. So, uh, Tell Pound, who my dad worked for, Pound Tire Company, uh, he played UK games on Saturdays, and my dad was a former athlete, played at Lincoln Institute. So, my dad told Tell Pound one Saturday when when and he would leave my dad in charge when he would leave and go to a UK game. So he told my dad once. Uh, my dad told him uh, one Saturday back in 1950. He said, uh, "One of these days, I'm gonna be going to those games." But, but keep in mind, you know, I mean, it was everything was totally segregated. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's I, and little did I know this. My dad told me this story later on in my life. So when I was getting ready, my dad and my and my, my parents and my mother too, she was involved, told me that it was my decision to decide what school I wanted to go to. And of course, again, had a good friend who was at Michigan State. 
Sherman Lewis, who was uh, probably six or seven years before me, was was a star running back at Michigan State. So we had a pipeline from Louisville to Michigan State. So Michigan State was my first choice. Now, when I got ready to make my decision, my decision, mind you, uh, I told my dad I was going to Michigan State. And that's when he erupted. He said, no, you're going to UK. So he said it was my decision, but it ended up being his decision. So that's how. But but it, but it all started back in 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 the in the, in the early fifties is when my dad again being from Winchester. See, we didn't know anything about Louisville, Kentucky. We country uh, in 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 the foothills of Eastern Kentucky and Winchester, Kentucky, and uh, all we knew was UK, and that's all they knew. So and 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 uh, so anyway, that's how pretty much how I ended up in UK, and I and, and I. I have no regrets about my decision or my choice. So that's how I ended up in UK. That, that's that's really interesting. What was your what was your first day or what was your first first experience visiting UK? Did you did you visit the campus before you committed or I know I know it's yeah, we, that it is today where every, everyone's traveling to every school, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, we uh, I did visit UK on several occasions. Uh, Back then, there were no limits, so I went there uh, on more than one occasion, and it was uh, it was really interesting. The the visits, uh, I uh, one of my teammates uh, or the other African American, my other African American teammates, Easton Hall and Al Johnson, who ended up, uh, we all ended up as being freshmen. We never saw each other doing. A and the only person, only another African American that was on the campus, there were two, Greg Page and Nate Norlington. So they had already signed the year before. So, but they 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 put me with, with Greg Page. I never saw Nate in the recruiting process. So during the recruiting process, the guy that showed me around campus or showed me around Lexington or showed me around town was, was Greg Page. And Greg was very strongly uh, uh, in favor of me coming, and and he, he, his thing was we need more African Americans to make this thing work. Because keep in mind, this is 1966, 1967, and uh, uh, you know segregation was strong. As a matter of fact, I participated in a lot of the marches in Louisville. I marched with Martin Luther King. I was very, very aware and conscious of the of the social social injustice place around in my city, Louisville, and 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 at the University of Kentucky. I mean. It was like uh, it was it was segregation was strong. I'll just put it to you like that. And, and of course, the SEC was all white. So uh, Greg just was very, very, very strong about the numbers and, and coming to the UK and, and, and helping change things. And um, I never thought about going to UK uh, until until that that strong pitch from from Greg and also my parents started, started to chime in and uh, and, and basically, uh, not knowing that the, the the implications that 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 integrating the uh, SEC and UK, I, I never thought about integrating. I just thought about okay, I got a chance to come to college and play football and get an education. So, you know, it was just let I want to go somewhere and play football. And Greg convinced me, and, and, and as did my parents, the UK was the place to go to make a change in in what was happening in our society, and that's. Pretty much what sold me, Greg. Plus my the strong my the strong support that I got from my from my parents was the reason that I ended up at UK and not the uh, and not any of the other schools that I had uh, thought about. That, that that makes a lot of sense. What, yes. What what was your experience like on the team? I know you were pretty much a standout from from the start, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm very, uh, very fortunate. I had a very good high school. I, I'm very fortunate to be named Parade Magazine, All American, All State, All Something. So I had a good resume. My wrong. I was pretty, I'm not bragging, but I was a pretty good old football player and certainly was a star Um So, you know, uh, you know, I going to UK, uh, I just, you know, my thing was focusing on just making it. You know, at first it was it was I was football, I was gun ho. But then when 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 I start to realize, and because I was very conscious of 
of of of racism and you know back then in the sixties they were still hanging folks in the south half all the time. And uh but my team you know, football just just brings people together. You know, you know the deal. I mean, you, you, people come together from all parts of the country, all walks of life. And um, there were a lot of, I mean, you know, for the most part, it was a they're going to UK. There were players. I mean, the players welcomed us, and Nate and Greg had been there a year before. But there were some players who who had never played with African American uh, foot, uh, on a team with African American African Americans before. And, and and there was team. I, I would say that there were some of my teammates who didn't buy into integration, and so uh, I had to whoop them into in in, in into. Uh, I had to get them. It was it was it was challenging. I'll put it to you like that. And I and I knew those guys. I, I mean, I know there were guys that, that weren't really ready for the for integrating. And but a lot of them. But for the most part. Uh, I was, you know, it was a, it was a good experience. There were times when we had our, our clashes and uh, uh, internally, and uh, but for the most part, it, it worked out because, it, see, the thing that really, I think, changed things is the fact that uh, Greg Page, who, again, Greg was the, uh, Greg and Nate were the first two African Americans to sign in '66, and and after Greg's death. Uh, it was very traumatic for not only me and because we were so close and, and Houston, but the whole team. And uh, so uh, I think things started to kind of change a little bit uh, after Greg's death. But the the, big, uh, the the thing that was that was most traumatic was adjusting the fact that we lost a, a teammate uh, from an injury that he su suffered in uh, in practice. So, you know, it started off. It started off getting used to to integrating a team and then now we have to deal with the death of, of a teammate who we all love and who was a big part of the uh the, the move the transition of, of i mean integrating the whole with one of the first african americans to play and all of a sudden he's uh he he passed and uh we got a lot of pressure from from a lot of my friends uh, i mean and and family members were wondering you know what happened to greg so there were so many things that that clouded the uh, 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 playing football at UK, and but Greg's death probably was the biggest thing. And uh, you know, today if something like that happens with with young players or, or with with the team, then you have counseling, and you know, we have all kind of support. But back then, it was almost like they didn't know what to do. The coaches didn't know what to do. The team, we, we as players, didn't know what to do. Here we went to Greg's funeral and in that casket was our teammate Greg Pay. So it, it was really tough. And I don't think we really got over that. And there are other things that happened on that team. We had another uh, football player, Cecil New, who was uh who was a freshman with me and who broke his neck, paralyzed from the neck down. And other players were injured. Stan Forson was a quarterback who had a concussion and he quit uh he 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 had to leave the team. But we had so many things going on. And uh and the main at, at, at some point it 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 felt it stopped being football. It started being survival. It started being how am I gonna make it through this next day? It was almost like how am I gonna make it from day to day? So football became secondary and making it and and surviving and that the all the all the all the all the things going on around us started to be the most important thing is, is making it from day to day. And that's what we had to deal with. So the social issues, the Vietnam War, the racism, the injustices going on, you know, people, uh, black folks being hung. We had to deal with that every day. Going to the South, when we started, when I started traveling, going to the South and dealing with the racist crowd who looked like, looked like they were lynch mobs. I mean, those are the kinds of things that we had to deal with every day. Going and, 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 and going to a restaurant and they saying we can't feed, we can't serve you because you're black. I mean, that's what we we dealt with every day and even on the road. So there were so many things that we had to do with, but we survived it and we dealt with it because we had the support from our families and we had the support from a team and we had support from from the athletic uh, the commitment and support uh, uh, from the uh, athletic community at UK. So you know it wasn't easy. Uh, but it was an experience. Uh, it was life changing, but it, but it was it was a lesson in life because the reality of you look at what's happening today, we're dealing with some of the same things today that we had to deal with back then. And that's trying to make it in a socially unjust world.
with a systemic racism. We have to deal, we have to deal with it back then and we're still dealing with it today. So basically it's, it was the same thing. So you just look and, uh, and that's the same thing that we had to deal with back then, but it was well worth it. It was a great experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And I think anyone, and I appreciate that anything, I think anyone who's ever played on a team understands how, how important it is to have, have people who have your back, whether it's in sports or, you know, in life in general. And like you had said that you have a team, you have a team around you and it makes things easier. Well, no doubt. And, and my uh, teammates, I mean, I mean, without, I mean, that, that's the whole, the whole idea team, you know, that, that's how we made it. And then support that we got, even though there were some dissenters, some guys that didn't buy in, but for the most part, I mean, I mean, the fact is uh, in 1969, I became the first African-American captain of any sport in the Southeastern Conference. My teammates elected me captain. So, so they, so it was that support that we had. I mean, without that support, one of course support that we had from my, from my, I got married when I was in college. I met my wife Brenda there, but the support that I had from my, from my wife and my family, my parents, and and, and my whole, uh, our family, and then the, the my teammates' family, uh, Houston and 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 uh, Nate and well Nate left, but uh, the support that we had, we couldn't have made it without that support because there were many times in Houston I had our bags packed and ready to go, and. Uh, but uh, through the support of a team and our parents and our family, we, you know, we we decided that uh, yeah, we we gotta stick this thing out. And and of course, you look at SEC today and and the fruits of our labor, the the fact that we 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 uh, made it through it, you can see what's happening in the conference today and all over the country, but especially in the SEC, dominated by African American players, and uh, uh, and it, you know, everything that we went through was well worth it. But the change, it was tough, but uh, had happened, and I'm, and I'm glad it did. So once once you left uh, UK, what what was next uh, on your journey? Uh, after I left UK, well, of course I said, you know, I I, I got married and uh, uh, in college I got married after in my junior year, and so raising my family when I left UK, and and as a, as a matter of fact, this is another story. Uh, my wife uh, graduated from nursing school and we had our son Keith and we moved to Louisville and I, I started to work uh, different jobs. So one of my jobs, I, I worked for the state of Louisville for about 10, 11 years. And uh, I became really active though, uh, through, my, through my employment, I worked for Louisville and Jefferson County Criminal Justice Commission when I uh, first got out of school. And uh, I, um, I became very active in the community. We started uh, uh, youth programs that we I work with youth uh, employment during the summer months. Uh, I, I had the good fortune of, of uh, starting a baseball league in, in, uh, in, that, in, in 1990. Uh, and that league is still going on today. But I was very active uh, with, with, the, with, with developing and working in the, uh, in, in the community and in, in, in with developing uh, programs and working with youth. So my experience at UK, allowed me to do that and uh, so uh, after le leaving the city of Louisville for I uh, worked for them for about 12 years I went to uh, Toyota Motor Manufacturing um, and uh, I'm pretty much retired from there after 28 years but uh, also uh, in between and in between I started officiating so I became a football official in, in, in high school and uh, and then uh, I went to Conference USA, or Mid South, then Conference USA, and and now I'm uh, I'm in the replay booth with the Southeastern Conference. So I made a full circle. Yeah, I was gonna say it came full circle there. Came full circle, and now I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to be in the, a communicator in the Southeastern Conference, which I've I've been for the last uh, since 1998. So, you know, that's pretty much been my life my, and my family. Of course, I, well, I have, uh, I have uh, married to my wife, Brenda, for 52 years. And, and I have uh, two sons, Keith and Trey. Keith, Keith played football at Ball State University. Trey played at Western Kentucky University. And uh, both of them went uh, to college on uh, scholarship, football scholarships. I have seven grandchildren and one great grandson. And they all sport rotten and I love it. And uh, and that's my life, and that's my life now, and, 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 along with uh, you know the football and and my family, and, and I've been very fortunate to uh, 
to to be a part of of a lot of good things through my life. That's incredible. So recently, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you might have gone back to the UK. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's I, I guess I, I meant to say that. Yeah, you know, I I, I left UK in 1972, I think. Yeah, 71, 72, and uh, I didn't graduate. Uh, my uh, I had to start my life, and uh, well, just uh, recently, uh, let's see, about two years ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been two years. I, uh, I I'm very fortunate to have continual ties to UK. I'm on the uh, University uh, Board of Trustees Athletic Committee, and uh, one day I was talking to uh, Dr. Capaluto, the president. I told Dr. Capilouto, uh, we have a statue, and uh, I didn't want to. We have a statue of the uh, my my good friend and teammate Paul Karam and, and our teammates signed a petition to, to uh, erect a statue of, of the four African Americans: myself, Houston Hargrave, Page, and Nate Norrington. And I was telling uh, Dr. Capilouto in a meeting one day, I said, Dr. Capilouto, none of the four of the, uh, of the men on the statue graduated from the UK. And uh, I told him I, uh, after 50 years, I, I wanted to go back and, and uh, I want to get my degree from UK. And I had opportunities. I had gone to other schools and started to get finish my degree and I, I quit. And uh, so Dr. Capilouto said, well, let me make a phone call and we'll get you in touch. And so with the, you know, with administration uh, registered. And so I did that and after two years, um, this past May, I finished my degree and I got my undergrad degree from UK I, after 50 years. And that's what I tell everybody. I said it only took me 53 years, but at least I, I finished it. But it's something I felt like I needed to do. And uh, uh, a lot of times I talk to uh, young people and, and I, I think it's important to finish what you started. You, you don't quit. You don't give up. And it's very important that you get your when I'm talking to my grandkids and I'm talking to my children about an education and, and, and about life. Then, then I wanted to be able to tell them, yeah, uh, yeah I, I do have my college degree. And it was very important that I finished because I wanted to complete that story. So through the, through, through the uh, uh, assistance from there, and, and, and the beauty of it all is uh, Mitch Barnhart, the athletic director, called me and said, uh, we'll pay for your education. So uh, I, I had that done. They did it. And and in May, I, I got my, my, my degree, which... I'm very proud of and thankful and, and very appreciative to the university for the support that I've gotten from my family, the support I've got to finish my degree. So some big for me. Well, congratulations again. That it really is full circle when you when you think about it after after so many years and being able to walk across that stage and uh, be be a graduate from Kentucky. So yeah, I'm very, very proud and very thankful. Uh, it's something that, that I really wanted to do, and I'm just thankful to be able to do it, to have been able to do it. My, my last question is just anything you would like to say to the future, future players, um, those, those coming, coming down the road? You know, I, I am so proud of these, uh, these young players and, and uh, especially the young African-American uh, athletes uh, for stepping up and stepping out for, uh, for using their voice and the platform that they have as athletes. See, they didn't realize how, um, how strong a voice they had and, and, and what an influence they could be on, on what's happening in today's society. I, uh, I can remember some things that, that, that I did as a football player that, that normal students weren't able to do. I mean, just speaking up and speaking out. So I'm so proud of these young athletes for using their platform today to make change. And when they take a stand, and even though it's not popular, just like the University of Kentucky football uh, team stepping out there and, and marching uh, with Black Lives Matter, the basketball team taking a knee, even though it's very controversial, but they're making a statement. And so proud of the athletes all over the world, all over this country, especially in the in professional level. Kobe, Colin Kaepernick was before his time. And they didn't acknowledge. He was trying to make a statement, and it didn't, and it didn't resonate until now. Until all these other things started to happen. So I'm so proud of these young black athletes for using not only not not only excelling on the field, but also using their voice to make a change and make a difference. It happened in in in, in Missouri in 2015. The football team boycotted 
and they changed things that happened at the University of Missouri. They fired the, the, the president, the athletic director because of the racism that was going on on those campuses on the campus and it's and it's and it's starting to pick and it's starting to happen all over this country so what's happening in this side it's unfortunate that we have to deal with those issues but that's life and so i'm so proud of these young men and i'm encouraging them to continue to use their voice and their platform to make a change and make a difference and uh and to get and and, and to do things that that are, that are going to make a difference in in how we all live and and it's it's unifying this country and i think you haven't seen the end of it i think it's just begun and I think they're realizing the the value of what they what uh, the the power that they have, and I think it's going to be utilized in a very positive way to make changes in this uh, needed changes in what's happening in our country and in this world. So I'm proud of, them. and and I say to them, keep up the good work and don't back down. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. That was excellent. Okay, I hope I said what, what I needed to say. I hope it I hope it works. Oh yeah, no, this this was great. I, I really do it's like I really do appreciate it. It's been okay. to talk with so many people. I just uh I interviewed Gene Washington yesterday. Okay. Uh talked to Mr. Northington earlier this week and then James Reed at Ole Miss uh last week. Okay. So I've been been making my rounds, but this has been, you know, excellent. Uh, my background, I have a I have an undergrad in education, mm. and my master's is in public history, where I studied African American history. Okay. So it's really my main area of focus is the civil rights movement, uh, all kind of mixed with the Vietnam War and all with the backdrop of the Cold War. Right. People a lot of forget. I think we like to look at history in one way or the other. Like this event happened separate from this but you had something like the you know you had and you lived it so you had all well, yeah it was all going on at once i mean you had louis armstrong going over to europe to go play and the only man on the planet who could walk through checkpoint charlie yeah you know i i can i could go on and on about 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 different uh instances of uh or different uh things that happened but you know I don't, I don't like to dwell on because a lot of it is is not you know, it would bring it brings back bad memories, but there were so many things that we had to deal with uh, back then. I mean, you know, you talk about I remember when we burned the ROTC building down on the campus of UK. I remember the marches. I I remember all the all the racism and all the hate and all the stuff going on between blacks and whites then and and uh, and but it was a part of life and. Uh, and, and what we did, uh, there was just a handful of African-Americans on our campus, but what we did is we stuck together. And see, that's what I, that, that, you know, we, we, it, was, it was just a group of us, but all of us were on one accord. So that's how we survived it because it was all, I mean, only, it's not only on, in the class, not only on the field and going to all through the South Carolina, but on our campus, in the classroom, walking across campus, the stuff we had to deal with, that's another story. But anyway, uh, but we survived it because we 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 knew what we were dealing with, and we we were strong in in in, in our unity. I mean, we 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 formed you know the Black Student Union, and then we had this one one group called Argena, which was a Negro spelled backwards on our campus, and we we fought and we stayed together. But anyway, a lot of different things going on back then, but it was all a part of of making it and and some and, and every day it was just it was it was the way of life. Yeah, and we just had to navigate through. That's why I said. It stopped being football and it started being survival. Mm -hmm. How much we make it from day to day? So anyway, it was a good experience. And I wouldn't trade it, and I'm passing it on to my kids and my grandkids. And I won't let them quit. I won't let them stop. And and, and they have to make decisions. And 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 whatever their decisions are, they got to move on and, and try to make a success out of life. And that's yeah. what I try to. I, mean, I think the biggest thing is you know pivot. I mean. It's not falling backwards. It's falling forward. You know, things some don't. Not everything works out, but exactly. You you find it. You find a different. You find a different avenue. I realized education. The classroom wasn't for me. Well, I loved history. I loved talking about that, and so you know, just finding a new network and new avenue. To... And 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 that's what it is. What what what's what's for you? What what's important to you? What how how do you make it best work for you? And that's the, that's that's the deal. I got a son that's uh, uh he's. He's uh, 
associate athletic director he was at uh, Willie Taggart at, at Western Kentucky. He went to Oregon. He went to well, he went to South Florida with Willie. He went to Oregon with Willie, and he got fired with Willie at Florida State. But it was like every time he moved, though, they had to make that decision. He they, they was at Oregon for one year, and then they had to leave Oregon. And and then everybody says, well, he should have stayed. No, he shouldn't. At that time, that decision was the right decision for for them, even though he got fired at Florida State. But still. You know, you just have to make those decisions and hope it works out for you. But that's what life is all about, those experiences and making the decisions in life. Yeah, I've, I've lived in four states, you know, chasing different his – with history, you know, a lot of the jobs are placements. So right. It's nine months. What It's really whatever they can fund. So right. I moved here from Minnesota, Minnesota. I lived in Ohio for a while. I worked at the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. And that's how I – That was good. Just, uh, to and – yeah, that's great. Well, man, I saw. So, where did you play football? I see that number three. Is that you? Behind you? Oh no, no, that's not. The picture. Oh, uh, I never played. I never played uh, football. I played rugby in college. So. Oh, okay, okay. Not, not quite. So, where'd you go to? Where'd you go to college? I went to the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire. So okay. About an hour okay. from Minneapolis, give or take. Right. Okay. Nice and cold. <laughs> yeah, man, I tell you that. Well, <laughs> one of the reasons I tell you, part of the part of my, and when I went up to Michigan State, I was getting recruited. It was like in January, February. I tell you, that was like that was a turnoff. It was like I don't think I'm coming up here for real. I mean, I was really that was my number one choice, but it was cold as all get out. And see, back then we had winters. We I'm talking about '66 and '67. We had real winters. And when I went to Michigan State, it was cold as I was like, heck no, I don't know if I can handle this. So I know I know about that that cold cold weather. It, it's so funny because you look back in history books and you kind of look at when games are played and you see a lot of games ending in like October, November, or not right. coming up again till spring. And it's like, why? It's like because they were traveling sometimes before trains were around, you know, mm -hmm. during you know, they were taking trains to the games. There wasn't even cars yet, and anyone who's from the Midwest or up north, it snows a lot, especially yes. back then. Yes, yeah. I mean, I I, I visited Purdue and Notre Dame, and and in 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 those one months, and I'm telling you, man, I I was uh, it, it made me think uh, about it because it was extremely cold. But it, it is it's amazing though, even though all those modes of transportation they were limited. They made it. They made it work. They found a way. They found a way, just like this season. Just tw somehow we made it through this 2020 season, football season. We found a way in spite of all the the uh, things going on with with this COVID. But we found a way. So this is just a historical year, no doubt, uh, uh, and it will be remembered for for all the things that, that that happened and how we survived it and how we made it happen. So. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this this coming season will 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 change we'll see